Hey Spooky Poos, it's Meg from My Meg C. As you can see, I am a shop on Etsy. I design um, gothic, spooky, nerdy type cross stitch patterns. I also design some stickers as well as some SVGs and some downloadable principal artwork. However, cross stitch patterns seem to be my niche. Um, I really have fun designing these. I love stitching them out. Um, I just wish I could stitch as fast as I could design these. Um, but yeah, so everything that you see here, the majority of, has all been designed with a program called Stitch Fiddle. Um, so this is not sponsored or endorsed by Stitch Fiddle in any way. However, I love this program so much. And I also just want to share um, what knowledge I have on this program. When I first decided I wanted to get into designing cross stitch patterns, I had no idea what I was doing. There's a couple YouTube videos out there uh, giving you some options of what to do, what to use. However, I was never really shown the whole process, I guess is, is what I want to say. So anyway, um, I'm going to try and show you how I put together these cross stitch patterns and how you can um, put them all together and make them look professional and put them up for sale on Etsy or Kofi or um, let's see, Creative Fabrica. Um, there's a bunch of different sites out there for you. Um, but anyway, yeah, so let's get started. So obviously, so you would go to stitchfiddle.com, um, you would want to create an account. Uh, yours obviously wouldn't look like this from the get-go. I've been on here for quite a while. I have 383 charts saved on here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I love this program. Now, I do pay for the premium version. However, my suggestion to you is to definitely start off with the free version. Um, some of the tools that I show you here today you might not be able to use in the free version, but you would want to get the basics first anyway. Um, so you would design something small, um, you know, something cutesy, and then you would just go from there. Um, Stitch Fiddle does offer a monthly subscription for a, a very good fee actually. Um, and then should you still enjoy it after that uh, month is up, definitely just go ahead and pay for the annual version. That's what I do. And I, I have very little bad things to say about this program. Um, I do have Mac stitch saved on our uh, saved. <laughs> I bought Mac stitch. Um, however, I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe it's because I started with stitch fiddle first, but, um, the more and more I try and play around with Mac stitch, I'm, I don't understand it. I'm sorry. I know there's a bunch of people out there that love it, but I'm not one of them. Stitch fiddles my jam. The only um, one thing that I love about Mac Stitch, which Stitch Fiddle doesn't do, there we go, is when it comes time to downloading this image as a preview image, I love the fact that when you click this little fun X button over here, it actually shows it as like digitized cross stitches, whereas Stitch Fiddle doesn't do that. So as you can see here with my death's head moth, this is very clearly just digital blocks, blocks of color. Uh, there's no depth to them. They don't attempt to make them look like they're stitches. It's just, boom, I'm, I'm a digital little block. I'm a pixel. Um, but I mean, it's little things like that, really. So anyway. So let's get started. So there's a couple different ways to get started with a pattern. Uh, generally what I do is I will have something sketched out or you know what, I even just go in and I just start doodling away on Stitch Fiddle and just whatever happens, happens. So basically you would hit, sorry, that plus one, plus one, create new number back here. You would click on cross stitch. I always click on DMC, however, it's your preference. Um, I mean, if you use Anchor, great. If you use this Madeira Moulin, <laughs> yeah, great. But you can also do no preference and it will just show you just generic colors. If you tend to use like, I don't know, different brands of floss, there are converters online that you can use. So if um, like say you stitched with CXC, um, you could do a chart using DMC and Stitch Fiddle and then convert all the floss colors that 
you end up using to what um, to what numbers it would be using CXC thread. So it would be a simple Google search, hey, convert DMC to CXC, and then you'll be laughing. <laughs> uh, so DMC is what I usually use. So we can try with an empty chart of our own design. Generally, I usually, when I'm doodling in here, I'll start with 60 by 60. And this is what will pop up for you. So Stitch Fiddle always starts off with these predetermined colors for you. So if you already have a color palette in mind, um, so say you don't want any of these colors, you can just get rid of them. So just click on what color you don't want. And as long as there are no stitches um, already placed on the canvas, sorry, right click, you can just click remove and then boom, pink is gone. However, so say this purple here, say you had a couple stitches on here already, and then you go to remove the purple, it'll say remove slash merge. So what that means is, is it thinks that you want to change this purple into one of the colors that are already there, or maybe you really do just want to get rid of it and altogether, which is this top option here. You would change the purple into a no stitch. All right, so we don't want any of these. So again, you would just right click on the color, remove everything. Okay, so say we know when we're working on here, we're gonna want three colors. So we'll start off right clicking this red and say we already know that red, we, we want 310. Okay, so 310 is black. And you know, we already know that we want, um, I don't know, 977. And the other one that we want for sure is this really cool 954. So then all you're doing is just right clicking and clicking on the actual color that you do want. And then you would just basically go in and then just start with designing whatever your stitch would be. Um, should you not like the last thing that you place down, there are undo buttons up here. However, this also works like um, a design program and you would hit control Z or control Z and it would get rid of the last thing that you did. Uh, if you continuously hit control Z, it would do the same thing. It would just get rid of whatever the last couple steps were. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to get across is you will fall in love with Stitch Fiddle. Just play around with it, keep experimenting with it, and if my shop is any example, you can come up with some pretty cool things. Um, whether you're importing pictures or otherwise, if you're just sitting there doodling the entire time. Um, these are my tarot cross stitch charts that I just recently released into my store and all of these were just from me you know looking at a reference picture on my phone and just quickly sketching out in Stitch Fiddle what I wanted it to look and then just fine-tuning um, so yeah give it time give it practice and you're gonna have fun with uh, Stitch Fiddle I promise well so my witch chart here I did end up sketching in myself this crescent moon but this witch type here that was an actual font I had so what I did and I don't believe I used Canva I believe I used another app but I'm, I'm just gonna show you it on Canva because Canva is free I believe I used it on my Procreate app so and I know that's not free for everyone so on Canva you go to create a design if you're doing it on the app there would be like a little purple plus symbol down in the bottom right hand corner and it gives you a bunch of um, predetermined sizes of templates that you can use but we can just do a custom size right now it's no big deal uh, so, uh, so let's say 300 so we're doing a thousand by 300 pixels you also have the option to put it in inches millimeters or centimeters I'll just do pixels right now it doesn't really matter and it'll give me um, one little template like this. Left hand side is where your text tool is. It doesn't really matter which size um, text to add because you can always go back in and edit this later, like you can resize this. So let's say that we want to do a cross stitch <laughs> moon. Um, spooky for life. <laughs> so let's highlight all this text and when you click on the top left over here you get a bunch of different font options that you can change this text into um, so say I like this work oh actually I do so we like this 
font. So again, you can resize to whatever size you want. So I just resized it to 100 there. There we go. I would just center this. I mean, it doesn't have to be centered. We can edit this and stitch fiddle later anyway, but I always center it because, you know, a little bit of OCD or whatever. Oh, come on. Okay, so say we're really happy with how this looks like. All we would do, click on share. We would download this. Um, you can keep it as a PNG, that's fine. Or otherwise, um, you would save it as a JPEG. Um, Stitch Fiddle only recognizes images, so you wouldn't want to save it as a PDF. Um, if you have the Canva Pro version, you could potentially save it as an SVG and then load it, but just keep it simple. We'll keep it as a PNG. It's no big deal. Download that baby. So now we go back over to our Stitch Fiddle, go to our charts page. We would click on plus one create new. We would do cross stitch. We would do DMC. And this time instead of empty chart, we're clicking on from picture. Now we're going to choose what picture we want. Really? You're not going to learn it? Good thing I can read. Upload. And boom. Spooky for life. So it automatically shows it at certain sizes. So this is loaded at 150 stitches long. Um, yeah, width. Okay, so bear in mind that if we were going to go over to our little cross stitch calculator here, so 150 stitches long, and then 45, and 45 stitches high. If we were going to sell this and tell people that they should be stitching it on 14 count ADA, so this is quite a large stitch if we kept it at 150 stitches wide. However, you also have the option of changing the fabric count. So let's say 18 count ADA. So we would only have to worry about them using a piece of fabric that's 16 and a half inches wide. And the stitched area would only be eight and three eighths wide. So I mean, it's up to you. It's personal preference. Just make sure that when you are creating larger sized cross stitch patterns that you are warning the buyer, hey, this is pretty big. Um, so I mean, for example, I have what the uh, stitched area should be as well as I try and showcase some of the different count, or, yeah, different count ADA um, and what those measurements would be. If we are happy with this at 150, then we could um, clean it up first a little bit before we shoot it off into the actual program. So to do that, you could fool around with brightness. You could fool around with the contrast. And then last but not least, what I usually do, if I'm just uploading text like this, I usually get rid of all these other colors that pop up. So I change this to a two. Generally what Stitch Fiddle will do is it'll show be some sort of white and then it will um, usually pop up as 310 black but you can also manually go in and choose what colors that you want this to be straight off the bat um, I don't I just keep it simple I usually start with a boring base like this and then if I want to add in colors after I've cleaned up this image then that's what I do um, so I just click save and then it will generate your chart for you now obviously we can't just save this like this and then try and sell it because I mean Ew. and there's no connection here like it just looks sloppy so what we'll do is we'll click on full stitches here and it will populate our little uh, floss legend here and we're just going to go in and clean this up a little bit so alternating by clicking on these two colors we're going to go in and add and take away and just basically make this look cute, cute and spooky. Okay, so I like how this O looks here and I don't wanna have to um, recreate it with each O that's in this um, little saying here. So I'm gonna click on the selection tool 
and I'm going to highlight all the pixels that the O's in. I'm going to copy, and then in the top left hand corner of where I want to place the next O, I'm going to right click, paste, and then Stitch Fiddle lets you kind of move it around um, so you can figure out where you want to place it. Then we click apply and then boom there you go now obviously because the original O there was some extra um, stitches behind it you just have to quickly go in and just erase whatever you don't want Okay, so we end up with something that looks like this, and let's say that we are super happy with it. Actually, I really, I, this is cute. Now, what I don't like about this is the spacing between some of the letters. So we now need to go back in and just kind of conjigger this so sh that looks a little more clean. So we're using our select tool again, and we're gonna try and make it so that there's two stitch spaces between letters. And um, I'm pretty sure this is only a premium feature. However, if you select what you want to move, um, you can, you don't even have to click move, that pops up in the menu there. You can just literally click and drag um, the letters over. Now let's say you didn't have the paid premium version. One of the ways that you can um, get rid of empty spaces quickly is using select tool and then you would go from the top of your piece down to the bottom um, yeah and then we need to get rid of one column here um, we would then click on delete column which would automatically pop up in the menu and then you could be able to do it that way. Otherwise, more than likely what you would have to do is you would just have to put in the stitches yourself beside, um, beside the original letter. It's time consuming, it can be done though, so that you can still do all this for free. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just one. There we go. Two, two, two. No, that's one, but that's still not one. That's fine. Okay. Now to get rid of all this other negative spa uh, space around the actual stitched area, so you're going to click select again. And you want to make sure that you're highlighting um, everything from the left to the right. Um, otherwise, this delete rows or columns option wouldn't pop up. I'm going to delete those rows. Same thing for columns. So you're going to highlight from top to bottom entirely. So then we can click on delete columns and just neaten everything up. You can also just, too, if it's small and simple like this piece here, just highlight your actual um, stitched area. Then when the menu pops up, you just hit crop. Um, Okay, so let's say after tidying this all up, we want more color in here. And there's a couple different things that you could do. I mean, maybe, maybe you also want back stitching on here. So let's change this black color by right, right clicking on it. Let's change it to a lighter gray. Apply. And then we're going to add a new color. And we're going to, let's grab this darker gray here, 645. And we are going to add back stitching to our letters here. So it's quite easy to see when you click up here, there's back stitches available. There's different options that you can use. And you can literally just, when you zoom in, all you have to do is click 
and drag and you can create back stitching. Now say I placed this wrong, say I went, oh, I made a mistake. So you just literally have to click on the last stitch that you made and it will get rid of it for you. Do you like back stitching? I've only done it a couple times now and I don't know. It looks nice when it's done, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm a total fan of it yet. Alright, and when you zoom out, you can see, oh look, all this is supposed to be backstitched. The other fun thing about this program, so say everything was all backstitched and lined and looked pretty, um, to make it easier for your customers to actually read, if you go to edit and then chart settings title layout and then go to grid and size, this option right here, self-drawn lines, we are currently on medium, which is the default. If you click on thicker and apply, <laughs> stitch fiddle makes it really easy for you to see um, where all the back stitching is on the graph. Just one little thing that I love about this program. Now bear in mind, if you are doing a pattern with a lot of back stitching in it, when you save this as a preview image, like I'm going to show you how to do later, um, the back stitching won't show up for it. So there's another kind of Ooh, stitch fiddle no <laughs> type moment, but we'll get to that. Okay, so we talked about some back stitching. Now, um, let's say that we didn't want back stitching. We just wanted to add some splashes of color into the actual letters that are on here. So top left hand side here, we'd go to this plus one symbol and we can start adding in any of the colors that are available on the chart. Now, bear in mind, this is a software program or a website or whatever. Some of these floss colors aren't as accurate as they would appear on, um, I mean, not only my monitor, it would be any monitor. Um, I know in the past I thought that this one, 743, was like really just a, a nice mellow yellow. Um, I mean, that's how it appears on the thing, but then when I actually started stitching with this color, it looked like I was, it, it just looked totally off and wrong. Um, so good rule of thumb is to, if you have it available, uh, make sure to have your actual flosses beside you and you're doing a color pull. Um, just making sure that the colors that you are choosing on Stitch Fiddle actually complement each other in real life. Um, another option is to go to the DMC website and go and order one of the floss booklets that they have. If those aren't options for you, then um, I did find a website that was actually See, it saved my bacon a couple of times. So it is stitchpalettes.com. I found them through Pinterest. They just randomly start popped up. Um, but basically, um, some of these are paid for. I, I think if you want to create your own palette, I think you have to pay for it. But there's already a bunch of made up palettes for you. And as you can see, so <laughs> as you can see, it's pulled um, colors from this picture here and it actually lists the DMC threads that you would see in this photo and from what I've seen so far it's pretty accurate this is also good too if you if you don't have a color palette in mind um, or maybe you're like me too maybe you're just no good with actually matching colors <laughs> you might just want to browse around on here or just on Pinterest or whatever and just pull up random color palettes and Whatever you like, whatever you think complements each other, um, maybe that should be the actual um, thing that you use for your cross stitch pattern. Again, I mean, it's all personal preference. It's all up to you. I'm just trying to give you some resources to use if uh, you ever get in a bind. So anyway, um, so we're gonna be pretty simple today. We're just gonna use good old 666. I just wanna add a pop of color to this. Okay, and let's say we only want the bottom portion to be this fun red. So you can go ahead and block off the area where you want the red to go. So I want it to go under here on the O and then right click 
and fill with. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure this is a, a premium thing only. I'm sorry for all you freebie people. You'll probably have to go in and manually click on each square to add color to. But I mean, again, if you're starting off small, just trying to get a handle on this program, believe me, it's worth it. As you can see from a quick view of my Etsy there, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this program and it'll turn out looking really cool. Okay, so we've got our bits of color there. Now, if you're like me, I have to do some sort of like a, a bit of an ombre effect. So I usually throw some of these stitches upwards just a bit to make it look like it's kind of melting up into the black. Maybe not melting, but I mean, you know what I mean? It's um, blending into the black. So when I do stuff like this, it kind of turns into looking like... Okay, so when you do those little splotches of color, it kind of turns into looking something like this. Now this is bigger, mind you. It's not as small as this pattern that we're working on. And, oh, are you going to There we go. So I used a couple different colors in this one. But when you do this pixelated type effect, it really does look cool um, when you translate it into actual stitching. This was a really fun one to do. So anyway, that's that. So you'll find your thing when you're creating your own cross stitch patterns. Um, recently, what I'd like to start doing is um, I had these little like stars randomly in spots um, I don't know I just think it kind of makes everything look kind of neat and put together and adds a little splash of fun I mean, that's just what I do, just to personalize some of my patterns, just to, so that at first glance, you're like, oh, yes, I think that is a Bimax C. But anyway. Okay, so I think it looks pretty cool with just those two colors there. Um, again, doesn't have to be uh, bright red. We could make it a funky purple color. I mean, which also looks pretty cool. And then again, so I'm just changing colors out by right, right clicking on the actual color and then just selecting what I think would look neat. I'm so indecisive, I don't know. There's green, like it looks pretty cool. And there's no reason for you to stop here either. If you come up with a little fun little saying that you created in Canva and then you realize, oh, you know what? I need to have a ghost floating up over, go ahead and do it. You can add in more columns after you've cropped it by clicking on edit. And then, um, sorry, we would be doing rows at this point. So we'd click add multiple rows and you can choose if you want to add more rows above or below your um, current work here. So let's say we needed 15 more below. So there's boom, 15 rows down below. Don't, don't let yourself be stopped by thinking, oh, well, I was originally just going to go in this with some words. So I have to stop here. No, you don't. Okay, Spooky Boo, so that's it for this video. Um, this was just part one. In part two, I'm going to take you through on how to come up with some sort of mock-up for your finished cross-stitch pattern and also show you how to um, download everything from Stitch Fiddle into a PDF format cross-stitch pattern that you could sell to uh, some Spooky Boos like yourself. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and share. Uh, I can be found on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, I'm just kind of everywhere right now because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Anyway, spooky booze, stay spooky, live nerdy, be you.